Brianna Dignard here and welcome back to my channel. So for the month of March, I did a whole series of dressing like a women scientist or inspired by a women scientist every single day of March. That was a lot of fun, a lot of very cute outfits. And one of the outfits I did for Mary Awning involved this dinosaur dress that you see here and a very cute dinosaur flower crown. And I thought it would be really fun today to show you how I made the flower crown as well as just chat about you about like dinosaurs and fossils and that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for materials for this project, we are going to need some fake flowers. Um, I think these came from Michael's. You can get them at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or Joann's, but only buy them when they're on sale because like every other week they'll go on like 50% off. Um, you can also find some really good flowers at Walmart and then believe it or not, Ikea has some nice fake flowers. You need some floral wire. You can also find this at any of your craft stores um, or also Walmart. You need hot glue and this is where I keep my more hot glue gun sticks. And then you will need some plastic dinosaur buddies. I got these at Michael's, also on sale, but you can probably find them at Walmart or online. So the first thing we need to do, I'm just gonna kind of get us set up with this project. And then while I'm working on it, working on it, I'm gonna turn you over to voiceover Brianna because she is more knowledgeable about these things. And I have a hard time working on a craft project and talking at the same time. So the first thing you wanna do is oh you're gonna need a pair of pliers and snippy boys for the wire and for the flowers Oop, i'll go grab those in a second but the first thing you want to do is kind of measure out what size you want to be by using a floral wire and your head for just a kind of general sized crown so this is about how much length i need it to be and i will be right back with those Wiry, snippy things. <laughs> One second. Ta-da, wiry, snippy things. So I am going to cut my wire off in that place and then join and leave a little bit of extra so you can go ahead and twist the two ends together. And don't worry if you have very like skinny floral wire, we're going to be adding more floral wire to this as we go along to make it more like rigid and thick so it will stand up. But if you get too thick of wire, it's impossible to bend and nobody has any fun trying to do that. So the next thing we want to do is start snipping off some of our flowers. And I just remembered that I have other flowers in addition to these yellow ones. So I will, you will see me um, when I start to work on this, add in some other flowers. But yeah, you can use whatever flowers you, whatever type of flowers you want. I thought the yellow would look really good with this dress, so that's what I wanted to do. So then next you're just going to cut off some pieces of floral wire, or even you can actually just kind of like leave it on the spool. And you want to basically wrap kind of the little stem part of the flower around your floor, yeah, around your kind of circle and you're just gonna start wrapping it with some floral wire. And guess what? You just get to do this all the way around until you have enough flowers on your stem to make you happy. So I'm gonna do that and then shoot you over to voiceover Brianna while I'm working on this flower crown to tell you more about dinosaurs and fossils. Hello everyone, it is voiceover Brianna. So taking over for, I guess, presentation Brianna? I don't know, a lot of Briannas. So as I mentioned in my fun fact for my Mary Awning video, the name dinosaur is actually coined by Sir Richard Owen, an English scientist in 1842, and it means terrible lizard. But dinosaur is actually a common name given to the group of large reptiles that lived from about 245 million years ago, which is considered the Middle Triassic period, to about 66 million years ago, where most of them seemed to die out. Uh, that whole mass extinction event where just all the dinosaurs disappeared. So in case you haven't heard terms like, you know, Middle Triassic Epoch before, the Earth is actually divided into a geological time scale by different periods. 
So about 245 million years ago is the middle of what is considered to be the Triassic period. And then the dinosaurs went from the Triassic period, spanned into the Jurassic period, hence Jurassic Park, and then died when the Cretaceous period ended. Um, so large geological events like mass extinctions typically end geological periods. So the apparent mass extinction of dinosaurs, which is theorized by some to be the whole like meteor hitting the earth thing, marked the end of the Cretaceous period and the beginning of the Paleogene period. So scientists use huge ecological geological events to distinguish between the different geological like kind of time periods. The group dinosaurs encompasses over a thousand species and more get added each year. Although that doesn't mean that everything is its own separate species, like because identifying animal species on just bones alone is a very, very hard. So you might have um, you might have found two bones and you say they're from two different dinosaur species, but it turns out maybe they're from the same dinosaur species. It's paleontology be hard. Um, it's important to remember also that everything we know about dinosaurs today only comes from what we can find in the fossil records. And also getting fossilized is very hard. So paleontologists do their best to estimate the number of species and populations, but that number is just an estimate. There could be a million dinosaur species out there that just never got fossilized, and as a result, we'll, we don't know about them. Fossils are always going to be found in sedimentary rocks, and now I'm going to shoot you over to Demobriana to show you why fossils are always found in cemetery oh, sedimentary rocks, not cemetery rocks. All right, here's Demobriana. <laughs> Hello, it is I, Demo Brianna, which you can tell is Demo Brianna because Demo Brianna has a lab coat. And we're going to talk about how sedimentary rocks work. So as voiceover Brianna mentioned, all fossils are found in sedimentary rocks. And that is because sedimentary rocks are formed by layers and layers of sediment and mud and rock pieces and blah, 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 all being squished down over a period of time. So for example, it would be like if I had a nice layer of sediment sitting down on the ground, my peanut butter, they came along and I, oh, my peanut butter, my graham cracker, and I came along and, let's see, added some, some mud, which is basically, you know, some rock glue. And then we got another layer of sediment squished on top of that and then some more mud and other sand and other things came along. Oh, I need more hands. And then more solid material got squished down. And you can see we start to have layers getting formed in our graham crackers and peanut butter sandwich, but in different rock layers. And I put down this graham cracker first, it's at the bottom. So this is our oldest graham cracker. In a sedimentary rock stack, the rocks or layers that are at the bottom are the oldest and they get younger the higher you go up. So if we happen to have some sort of dinosaur, and pardon me, this, well, this used to be a gummy shark, but pretend it's a dinosaur. If we have some sort of animal come along, do, 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 and all of a sudden like a mudslide or something causes it for it to die, bleh, and then it all of a sudden gets very quickly buried in mud or in water or by dirt. Do, do, do. And then a bunch of time passes by and more rock layers start to build on top of it. It's a very messy demonstration. And let's say another one gets stuck in this layer. And now we have an even bigger rock layer. And within those layers, we have fossils because our animals have died, their tissues have been replaced by stone, and now they have become fossilized. So when paleontologists go into the fossil record or look at these layers of sedimentary rocks, they can tell the fossil in this layer is older than the fossil in this layer, meaning this animal lived before this animal did. So that's a little bit of a demonstration as to how fossils are formed in sedimentary rocks. Back to you, voiceover Brianna. Thank you, Demo Brianna. All right, back to building a flower crown. And we're gonna have a fun historical story to conclude whatever the heck this video is. So let's talk about the bone wars in the United States. So in the mid 1800s, people globally were starting to get really excited about dinosaur discoveries based on kind of a beginning of geology and paleontology by a lot of English scientists and a lot of discoveries that were happening in England. So 
now we've moved from just people in England being excited about it to like the whole world's getting excited about dinosaurs. So this particular story centers around Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, which are fun names, born nine years apart, who began as friendly colleagues in the field of paleontology. They actually were so friendly, they even named some of their paleontological finds after each other. But this was all to change in 1868, when after Cope showed Marsh around a quarry in New Jersey, Marsh, behind Cope's back, made a deal with the quarry owner that any new fossil discoveries that were found there were to be sent directly to Marsh at Yale, where he was a professor. And you know what? Crazily enough, Cope wasn't too happy with that, and thus ended their friendship and started a pretty wild rivalry. In 1868, uh, Cope also published a reconstruction of a new plesiosaur species that he had found, but made a mistake while determining the location of the vertebrae, and Marsh was the one to point it out, much to Cope's embarrassment and anger. So both Marsh and Cope went out to the wild, wild west to search for more fossils, racing to discover more than the other one. They even went so far as to spy on each other's progress to figure out who was winning. Cope kept trying to get ahead by rushing his discoveries to be printed in scientific journals, even going as far as purchasing the journal The American Naturalist in 1877. During the course of his lifetime, Cope wrote 1,400 articles, making him one of the most prolific scientific authors in American history. For context, I've written two uh, scientific articles, and they were both exhausting. I can't imagine writing 1,400. Then, Marsh used his government connections to get himself established as the chief paleontologist of the recently formed U.S. Geological Survey, getting more government funds and political power, which he then used to cut Cope off from government funding, which was a really important source of money for paleontological digs. By 1890, Cope was living alone with only his fossil collection left, and Marsh decided to try and take that too by claiming all fossils were property of the U.S. government, US government as they had all been funded by the U.S. government money. Cope, however, provided lots of evidence that he actually owned most of his personal fossil collection and sent his collection of all of Marsh's less than ethical dealings to a journalist and the newspapers went wild, with Cope and Marsh going after it for two weeks. Marsh was accused of corruption, incompetence, and misuse of government money. A congressional hearing into the matter resulted in slashing the budget for the U.S. Geological Survey, getting rid of the Department of Paleontology, including Marsh, and forcing Marsh to turn over his fossil collection, which he had collected with government money. This whole battle really ruined both of their reputations, and they ended up dying pretty much broke, with Cope dying in 1897 and Marsh dying in 1899. Despite this whole mess and wildness, uh, Cope actually left behind 13,000 specimens and Marsh marsh a pretty comparable amount so all of those bones were able to end up in museums and became a very valuable resource to paleontologists so uh that was a crazy story my dinosaur crown is almost finished and i'm going to turn you back over to presentation brianna for the conclusion all right welcome back we have our beautiful well-made flower crown now at the end you can just kind of use a little bit of hot glue and glue together some of the wire pieces or smooth them down or go back in and fix some of the pieces that might be sticking out and then as a final step i just glued my little dinosaurs in there where i wanted to and now we have dinosaur flower crown um just a super cute thing i love it i think it turned out so cute um <laughs> So go and make your own dinosaur flower crown if you want to, or you can just forgo the dinosaurs, make a normal flower crown, or you can put whatever the heck else you want on it because it's your flower crown. Live your life. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about fossils. So today's fun fact that we're going to write is that not all dinosaurs lived at the same time. In fact, the Stegosaurus was extinct 66 million years before the Tyrannosaurus Rex ever appeared up on the scene. So please be sure to rate that fun fact in the comments below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, make your own flower crown, everyone deserves a flower crown. Um, follow me on Instagram, again tell all your friends about this, and keep it sciencey!